We need everybody to lift your hands before the Lord, real. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. We come out of self tonight. We come out of ourselves and into you in greater measure tonight. We release your power over this segment tonight and over everyone that is here. We want them to experience your presence, oh God, in a greater dimension. Lighten us a fire and a hunger after your presence, oh God. Take away tradition tonight. Take away religious protocol tonight. And Lord, for those here and those that are watching long distance, we extend the presence of God where they are. In the name of Jesus. We release the power of healing tonight. We thank you for the gift of prophecy tonight and the supernatural. Thank you, Lord God. Let you be glorified tonight, oh God. Not men. Thank you, Lord God. Let you be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I feel the presence of God in here right now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, God. Thank you. We honor you tonight. We declare a hedge of protection over everyone in here tonight. A hedge of protection. Let the fire of your spirit touch everyone tonight. I feel impressed to speak this. Hallelujah. We declare God's protection over everyone in here tonight. That no accident will take them out. We cover you. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, oh God. Let revelation flow tonight. Break up the fallow ground in hearts tonight. Give us all in here to hear tonight. What your spirit is saying. Oh, I feel your presence tonight. Hallelujah. We fight in the realm of the spirit. Yes. Yes. We bless and we prophesy. Yes. In, the in the name of Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Lord God, that you're taking, oh my God, that you're taking us out of self. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Anybody with pain, touch the area right now. We speak healing over that area right now. We speak the bones, tissues, ligaments, tendons. We break it. In the name of Jesus. We charge free range of motion and limbs. Pains disappear. Right now. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise. Let's worship God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God. Let the x-ray machine of your spirit come forth, oh God. Break backslidings tonight. Break backslidings tonight. I feel impressed to speak this tonight. Hallelujah. Let deep conviction fall. At every seat right now. We break every ungodly spirit. Jesus. We cancel this assignment. We come against lust and perversion. Tonight in Jesus' name, we break it. Yes. Hallelujah. Break it in Jesus. We break it right now. Oh, God. I feel the fire. Hallelujah. 
Let conviction fall tonight. Sanctify us, oh God, for this new journey. There is a reason why we prayed the way we prayed tonight. God is setting things up, but the enemy is setting up stumbling blocks. We break it. We break it right now. Right now. Thank you for your divine presence tonight. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Somebody say amen. Amen. Now, before, before the kids leave tonight, I want to be able to pray over them. I want to be able to pray over them and cover them. We're, we're just going to come. They're going to come up here to the front. We're going to pray over them. Now, one of the things you can be sure of, we don't believe in prophet lying. So, if God hasn't given us anything to say, we ain't going to say it. That's the bottom line. Hallelujah. We don't have to conjure up a word. Because we know there's been abuses to what we want to talk about. Now, Brenda and I, we're tag teaming. We normally tag team when we do our segments on, on Zoom. But as Pastor said, I got a big mouth. So I have a tendency to run my mouth a little bit. It's all good. Because you wouldn't believe that there was a time in my life I was very shy. My wife thinks I'm lying when I tell her that. But the truth of the matter is, is that when you're, when you're going for God, you need to be bold. We saw something before we left Dallas to come back here. And we saw in a place called Russell, Russell Creek Park, there was a, a, a two old elderly gentlemen, now elderly, elderly women, I stand correct, that were sitting out there in the park on their mats praying to another God. In the open. In the open. And I told that to Brenda. And I said, the Christians have a hard time expressing themselves. They're afraid of intimidation. But they're not afraid to worship their God. And we know it's an inferior God. Part of our assignment, before we go into what we want to talk about tonight, is to cause people to work in the fullness of their authority in Christ. To take the church beyond the parameters of the four walls and go out and manifest Christ wherever you are. That's powerful. Because let's be real, there's only one pulpit in this church. Everybody cannot occupy one pulpit. But you have a pulpit out in the street. You have a pulpit in the marketplace. Oh my God. And God wants to manifest his presence to every one of you. Hallelujah. Now, we need to break some stuff down tonight as we go into what we want to talk about. We understand that people have things that they've got to do. We understand this. The church that I came out of, we was in church for hours. <laughs> so we'll, we'll be, we're just going to be led by the Spirit. In order for you to walk in the things of the supernatural, to walk in the gifts of the Spirit, you, you got to come out of the place of magnifying the frailties and weaknesses of men more than the power of God that resides on the inside of you. I think that's important. We know everyone in here is human, but you are spirit beings housed in a body. And when you became born again, God redeemed you. Which now, you have the ability to have unlimited access. Somebody say unlimited access. To God. In heaven. Now, let's deal with this. You got to remember that God himself cannot be tempted with evil. Guess what? His spirit is on the inside of you. So the spirit of God on the inside of you cannot be tempted. It may be true that you may have some issues. But when you submit yourself to the greater one that's on the inside of you, guess what? When we sow to the spirit, we deny the lust of the flesh. Am I, am, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Because until you get to that place, it's going to be very hard for you to walk in the things of the supernatural. Right. Because the things of this world, 
seem like they're, they're much stronger than you than to pull after God. As spirit beings, as people who are truly born again, we want you to hunger after the presence of God every day. That's going to be your protection. That's going to be your spiritual insight. Hallelujah. Those that fall off the spirit will even be able to discern when somebody's lying to them. Because the same Bible that we read was inspired by the spirit of God. Does everybody understand that? So the spirit knows what he wrote. And even if you don't know scripture verbatim, there's something that should go off on the inside of you to let you know something's not right. You may not be able to put your finger on it, but you need to know something is not right. The spirit of God on the inside of you is your compass to let you know when there's truth versus error. Oh my God. And that is your protection. You will not overdose on the Holy Ghost. Hear me clearly. You will not overdose on the Holy Ghost. So you need to graduate from 15 minutes of prayer. I'm just getting started in 15 minutes. Because it takes every bit of that to live in a day like this. We pray for countless people that are dealing with sickness and disease, dealing with crisis situations. Imagine what life looks like when you're, when you're getting calls and every one of them is a crisis. Some of them are getting, dealing with sickness from COVID-19. We've seen countless people get healed of COVID-19 with no negative side effects. Not to mention everything else. I want you to see, every one of you in this room, I want you to see, everyone in this room, I want you to see the area that you live in right now. Not only as a mission field, but a place that you can take territory. Look at this place as a place that you can exercise, somebody say kingdom, kingdom. Dominion. dominion. Hallelujah. So you're taking the church out of the four walls. And I'm running my mouth. We, I'm going to give you some time. But taking the church out of the four walls, that's our assignment. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm looking at you, man of God. Yes, you want the hat. <laughs> this is just as much about demonstration as it is about teaching tonight. Man of God, come, to, come here. Yes. I feel the fire of God over you. The Spirit of the Lord is going to break you into a new season right now. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm talking to you. I feel a deep call over your life. Because I sense a lot of stumbling blocks that have been there. Hallelujah. I feel a fight tooth and nail. Hallelujah. And I declare victory over you tonight. Hallelujah. I want you to lift your hands before the Lord. Hallelujah. There's nothing behind you but trouble. I feel victory over your life. In my spirit right now, there's a new day for you right now. You've had to deal with disappointment, setbacks. Hallelujah. But you're fighting. The Lord says, keep fighting. You're coming out victorious. What the enemy meant for evil, God's making that good. You are prophetic. You, you have a prophet's call on your life. God's going to use your voice too in a greater dimension. Thank you, Jesus. Tonight is a new beginning for you. The past is behind you. All the disappointment, God's going to turn it into joy. Hallelujah. I feel that as I talk with you right now. God is turning your season into new joy. Again, I hear what the enemy meant for evil. God's making it good. And I activate the prayer warrior in you. There's some things that's being shuffled away out of your sight. Distractions. Hallelujah. Distractions. That's what I'm hearing. Distractions. Hallelujah. God wants to do something new. But he's cleaning some things up. Hallelujah. Over your life. Hallelujah. And in your circle of people. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 
God's bringing no. Hallelujah. And I declare prospering over you right now. And I speak over the businesses for him right now. I declare that right now. You've got a sharp mind. And the enemy would like to abort purpose. But I feel the hand of God protecting you. Tonight is a divine calling for you. God's going to move. In a greater dimension. Oh, Jesus. Lord, what you've given us, we release over him right now. Woo. I felt that. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Somebody give God a praise. Now, what just happened, I looked at him and I felt a connection to him when I was looking at him. I felt a connection. This is about as much demonstration as it is teaching tonight. When I looked at him, and this is the thing. Whether God has given me something specific to say at the time that I said that doesn't matter. By the time he get here, I'm going to have something. Does everybody understand that? But I felt his, I felt his spirit. I felt the connection, and I went with that. This is all about learning how to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. Now, for a lot of people, it's easy to prophesy to people that you know. I'd much rather preferably deal with people I don't, have, don't even know. Because then that's real prophecy. In, in, in word of knowledge. Let's tie it all together. It's not just prophecy, it's word of knowledge. In a lot of settings, when there's hundreds of people and thousands of people, sometimes people pick out the ones that they know. That, to me, ain't real. <laughs> now, it does happen. But by and large, you need to understand that the Holy Ghost does not make a distinction. If it's Holy Ghost for somebody you know, it's Holy Ghost for somebody that you don't know. But you want to be able to feel the connection because this, what you're, what's happening tonight is about teaching and demonstration. That you can be sensitive to the spirit. Not just in church. But outside the church. Hallelujah. So I want you to be sensitive to the things that's happening in your spirit. When you're in front of people. Notice the change in your spirit. When you come in somebody's presence. Because we're talking about the gifts of the spirit right? We want you to be sensitive. To the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give God a hand clap. <clears throat> we, have, we, we have people that we've ministered to in Dallas. We saw a lot of people get healed and delivered and set free. The people that was connected to our ministry, still connected to our ministry, they're on fire. You hear them pray? you know they have prayer intensity because we believe in pouring into people. And one of the things you want to do as a pastor, as a spiritual father, is to see the people that you minister to grow up and occupy and operate in the same way that Jesus did when he called his 12 disciples and the 70. He put himself out of a job. He was only going to be there for three, three and a half years. But he prepared them, and then he sent them forward. That's our assignment. Amen. We don't want you to be babies forever. Anything you see happening tonight, you can do on a different level. I'm going to tell you why. Everybody's calling is different, but everyone has the calling to manifest the supernatural. Whether you're in the workplace, whether you're in ministry, whether you're, whether you're playing music, you still have a, a, a privilege to manifest the things of God. In other words, God wants to gainfully employ you in his kingdom. Because most people think that, that they're, they're serving God is confined to just coming and sitting someplace. You come here to get charged up. You come here to get fired up. You come here to receive an impartation. You are an extension of the church everywhere you go. And even if the things are happening here, if it's not happening with you, we still got to connect you to understand that when you go out and invite somebody to this ministry, 
they need to see it in you. Does everybody understand that? Everybody want, they need to see it in you because it's not confined to a few holy people. That's the reason why we're going to be talking about the gifts of the spirit tonight. When Paul was talking to the Corinthian church, he wasn't just talking to ministers. He was talking to the church at large all across Corinth. Does everybody understand that? You have power tonight. And we, are, we want to see that activated in you tonight. And when we come back, we want to see, we want to see a definite transition in your life. Hallelujah. Oh, Karababasia. Oh, hallelujah. But get rid of the sin consciousness. Follow God consciousness. You're going to, listen, there's always going to be a battle between the flesh and the spirit. But you got to make a choice of which one you're going to listen to. I can tell you being saved almost 40 years, 39 years to be exact, that you don't get a vacation from that. You have to understand that it's your enemy. Because think, I don't care how good it looks, it's going to take you away from your destiny. Because we're all going to have to stand before the Lord. And eternity is a long time. And with all due respect, I don't want to be on the wrong side of eternity. Right. Oh, God. Amen. So <laughs> forget that. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh-uh. When I stand before the Lord, I don't want to stand before the Lord in shame. All I want to hear is well done. Thy good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I feel victory in this place tonight. There's an illumination that God wants to bring to every one of you in here. Hallelujah. Now, let me ask a question. Is everybody in here tonight born again? All right. All right. We want to make sure. Because since you're born again, you have access to what we're going to talk about tonight. And if you're not, you still have opportunity once you convert your heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. When the man of God asked us to do this, you know, we, like I said, add a little context. When I was coming up, nobody taught us how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. We learned that by watching. In other words, it was caught more than taught. But the beautiful thing about where we was is that we saw it happen so much it became normal. And that's powerful. And we're going to tie this to some of what we want to talk about tonight. Because we want to see a culture of the supernatural through the gifts of the Spirit manifested. And it doesn't have to be spooky. It doesn't have to, because a lot of people have messed things up. And we understand that. But you can have integrity and walk in the gifts of the Spirit. Do you understand that tonight? You can have integrity and character and still walk in the things of the Spirit. Because many times people, and this is from my personal experience, I've caught a lot of flack from people who ain't walking in anything, but they want to say, be careful of the false prophets. They got to be real ones somewhere. There's got to be real men and women of God somewhere. Amen. Everybody cannot be classified as a false prophet. Amen. Does everybody understand that? There are people who are real. And they love them some Jesus. They love them some Holy Ghost. Oh my God. Hallelujah. I can care less what hypocrites got to say about me. Matter of fact, I'm doing something good if they've got something bad to say about me. You cannot be worried about pleasing people when it comes to serving God. You cannot be worried about that. Because when you stand before the Lord, they're not going to be with you. Now, 
I'm going to tie this together, and, and Brenda, she's got her microphone. Now, you ready? You got something you want to say? That's my queen. Wherever I go, she goes. That's the bottom line. I just want to add to when you receive Christ and you're born again, then you become witnesses of Christ. You don't just be a good member just sitting on your seat and come to church and don't have anything to say about the Lord to anyone. Then you're not really being a believer in action. You're just being a believer, a silent believer, like a secret closet Christian. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But he said that once we receive the Holy Ghost, we will be bold for him. The boldness of the Lord will come out. Sometimes you don't know why you're saying what you're saying to people, but it's the Holy Ghost that's saying it, and it's not you. Because the Holy Spirit knows what a person needs. Amen? Amen. And we just need to be bold for God. He gave his all for us. He gave his life for us. And he's asking the same for us to do for him. Amen? Amen? And that's nothing, we're not giving any more than he did. Amen? This is our reasonable service. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Nothing extra. Yes. It's our reasonable service. Yes. When you love someone, you go all out for them. Let's talk about this thing in the natural. When you have somebody in your life, a significant other, you do everything you can to show that person that you love them. How much more, God? Because that person didn't die for you. And would they die for you if they had to? We don't know. But we know that Jesus died. He gave his life on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. That we may have life. Hallelujah. Eternal life with God. Hallelujah. Forever and ever in heaven. So I just wanted to piggyback on that. Jesus loved us so much that he gave himself, and now he's asking us to do the same. And when he was talking in the book of Acts, he said, you start right where you are. Jerusalem was where they were. He said, in Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, and then unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Sometimes we want to go to the uttermost part of the earth, and we haven't even started where we are. We have to start right where we are and be bold for God and give God glory that's do his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I just want to thank God, hallelujah, for saving me, filling me with the Holy Spirit that I could glorify him because that's what it's all about, us giving him glory. All the glory belongs to him. Hallelujah. It's not my glory. It's his glory. And any way he uses me, it's for his glory. Amen. Now, we know we're talking about the gifts of the spirit. We're talking about the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, and prophecy tonight. Praise God. And we know that the word of knowledge is knowing something. Praise God. Having a knowing of something that is about to happen or that's happening. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give this testimony of something that happened to me. And I'm going to give this testimony so that it could be to the glory of God about a word of knowledge. I was in prayer one day and the Lord showed me a person, a certain person that would come by my brother's house. I was living in Franklin at the time. He showed me this guy so clear. And he showed me him in the spirit. He said, when he comes by the house, pray for him. And I told my husband, I said, when so-and-so come by, God said to pray for him. And I saw him in a certain way. So when he came by the house, I said, I'm going to call him David. David, you need prayer? He said, oh, I sure do need prayer. I said, I'm going to ask you to do something a little unorthodox. Mm -hmm. I said, it's going to seem strange, but I need you to do this. Mm -hmm. 
I said, I need, he had on a jumper, an all-in-one jumper. But this is what I saw in the spirit. So I asked him to pull down his jumper to his waist. He looked at me. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> Just so y'all know. None of that. <laughs> so he pulled the jumper down. to. Before he pulled it down, he said, wait a minute. I need to tell you something. And I said, okay. He said, because I don't want you to be surprised when I pull it down. Well, he, he had a bruise from here to here. He said, how did you know? He said, I didn't tell anybody. I fell a few days ago, and I was bruised, and I couldn't even get up for 30 minutes. I didn't even go to the doctor. The Lord told me, showed me him and had us to pray for him and to anoint him with oil. And he said that he had been hurting all, every day from the time he had that injury. And the Holy Spirit had us put oil on him. And he stayed there and he slept for about three hours. And the Lord healed him. Hallelujah. But the word, hallelujah, of knowledge came through prayer. Amen. God will show us things any kind of way he choose to. But he deals with me in prayer, mostly. Now, he deals with me in other ways, but that's my number one. I love it. In prayer, he'll show me things or tell me things. Uh, have me to really um, intercede and for someone. I may not know exactly what's going on with them, but I know that I'm praying intensively for that person because of something's going on in their lives. Now, we're going to tie this together because when Brenda and I operate, she operates differently, but we work together. Does everybody understand that? And I think that's important. And we've learned how to appreciate her role and my role in the things of the Spirit. Now, we're going to tie this together. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. We're going to tie this together in a nice little bow like only the Holy Ghost can do. Hallelujah. We want you to be activated. Now listen, when it comes to the word of God, we have, we have those that would be curious about things and those that are hungry. You're going to get out of this based upon the hunger that you put in. Does everybody understand that? We ask you to have an open mind about the things of God because let's be real. God rewards hunger for the things of God. Oh, glory. And God wants to take your life from a natural life to a supernatural life. And this is not pie in the sky. The supernatural should be your lifestyle. And, it's, and, it, and the gifts of the Spirit is only to start. Hallelujah. Let's deal with 1 Corinthians chapter 12, starting at verse number 1. We're going to tie this together. It says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now, when you do a search of that particular scripture, when you look at the original Greek, the word gifts is not there. It's not. It would read, now concerning, or should I say, concerning now, spiritual now in the rest of the text you'll see gifts but in there that word has been added so now concerning spiritual somebody say spiritual spiritual hallelujah Paul is telling them that he does not want them to be ignorant or lack of or, or without the lack of knowledge that's very important now the backdrop of the Corinthian church was a lot of idol worship there was issues in the Corinthian church with fornication. People were carnal. Some was of Apollos. Some was of Paul. They had a lot of issues going on during that time. Paul even had to deal with them about giving. All of those things was going on with the Corinthian church. In spite of all of this. But yet, in spite of all of that, 
they had an opportunity to learn how to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Now, when you, have, when you do a, a study and you look at the, the, the Greek concerning that particular passage of Scripture where all the gifts of the Spirit are, you notice there's not a lot there. There's not a lot there. Matter of fact, many of the words that are there, you would, they're the same Greek words as, like, say, for example, word of wisdom. That's the same Greek word when you see wisdom going through there. In a lot of cases, you'll see that. So, you need to understand that Paul didn't spend a whole bunch of time going over, going over the nuances, so to speak, of word of knowledge, word of wisdom. But we can see through Scripture how these things happened. Does everybody understand that? And I think that's important because you need to know how these things operate. The gifts of the Spirit, we call, we call it a little bit of an introduction to the things of the supernatural. Hallelujah. It's God's empowerment for you to live life here on earth. Because the, super, the gifts are not just confined to the church. Everywhere you go, you have an opportunity to operate in these things. So now Paul says concerning spiritual or spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Know ye that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led, past tense. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God call of Jesus accursed, and that no man can say, to you, say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. Oh, glory. Now, we're going to tie this together what we want to talk about. And there are differences of administration, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operation, but it's the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation, somebody say manifestation. manifestation. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Now, every means every. I looked it, I looked it up. Every means every. Does everybody understand that? That means everyone in here, the manifestation by inheritance has been given to all. Now, it's like any other inheritance. You've got to claim it. You've got to go after it. The promise is available for every one of you that is truly born again in here right now. Oh, I feel this tonight. But you have to access it by inheritance. You have to first know that it is for you. The manifestation, somebody say manifestation. The manifestation of the spirit is for every one of you in this room. Now, it may be true you may not be walking in the full measure of it, but that can end tonight. Does everybody understand that? It does not take long, and we're going to backtrack eventually. It does not take long for you to, all you need to know is that, that God has it, has it for you. Now, show of hands. How many of you are confident in your ability to hear from God? Amen. All right, we're going to fix that. Because in order for you to be able to walk in the gifts of the Spirit, Understanding that all nine gifts of the Spirit require you to be sensitive to the Spirit of God in some capacity or the other. You need to be able to recognize how God deals with you in order to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Now, this is the thing, and we're going to tie this together. Before, before you was born, you was predestined. And when you came here, you had a God-given assignment from your mother's womb. Our job tonight is to activate what God has already put on the inside of you. The only thing we're doing is confirming by what we do everything that God had preordained for your life even right now. Every one of you have a unique gift and grace to operate. And in this environment, we want to we want to be the catalyst by the Lord to see that come out. Does everybody understand that? The most we can ever do as ministers is to activate what God already put in you from the beginning, and God will align people in your life. He will put people in your life in different seasons in your life. Wow, that will be a catalyst in activating a piece of the puzzle. 
of your life spiritually. It's a win-win situation. Does everybody understand that? Hallelujah. That's why we give you this advice. When you come to the house of God, be hungry. And we as ministers of God have a responsibility to give you an impartation. I'm the benefit of a lot of people that have prayed over me and spoke over me. I did not make this journey by myself. God raises up ministries for a reason. Because there's a grace that God has given them to be released over the people that they've been deemed responsible for. Does everybody understand that? So, when we pray, we don't pray in vain. We know that when we pray, God's going to give us an impartation in his presence. When we get up off our knees, we're going we're to share that. We're going to share that word, and we're going to share the spirit that we receive. It's a win-win situation. Now, remember this. God is a wise investor in his power and his authority. You cannot pray for more of what you're not using. If you're not using what you have, why are you? God's not going to give you any more of what you're not using because what you have right now is not being used. So we want to, this, this is why coming out of the four walls is important. Because many people are sitting here thinking that they don't have any purpose in life. But you got a purpose. If you're, a, if you're born again, you're the carrier of God's presence. Amen. And you're a carrier of his word. And you have the ability to bring it out. Everything does not have to be planned, beloved. You don't have to get up one Saturday and say, well, I'm going to get up, I'm going to go out witnessing. Yes, you can do that. But there's a lot of opportunities that can happen on the workplace, at the checkout counter, in the library, divine connections that God will set up. Now, in order for you to operate in this, you've got to be open to these things. You can't be so busy trying to check out your groceries that you don't take the time to administer to somebody that may be in the line struggling. Hallelujah. Amen. God. You need to be open because when we talk about kingdom extension, kingdom extension is just not confined Hallelujah, to what happens in the church. Most people will go to church on Sunday, Wednesday night, Thursday night, have a good time in church. Once the benediction is over, everything stops. That's the end of the power and the presence of God till the next time you come in. But this is the thing. Just like the illustration I gave you about those sitting out there in Russell Creek Park, your neighbor, they're more hungry for, for their God then basically we are for ours. You guys are more powerful than you know. And I speak that to myself. I have to challenge myself every day. It takes all the prayer that I can muster to stay in the place, to administer to all the people. Hallelujah. Here in Patterson, this is an opportunity for every one of you. Look at this place as a haven for the supernatural. Look, it's a place for you to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. So we're tying this together. <coughs> so listen. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to talk about the, the manifestation of the Spirit. Is Point to yourself and say the manifestation of the Spirit, the manifestation of the Spirit has been given to me. Has been given to me. I feel that strongly tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. Don't let anybody tell you that it's for some and it's not for others. Come on, praise because that's not true, beloved. It's not. Amen. Hallelujah. Now your life is going to be far more exciting once you realize this. Yeah. One of the things I've learned about walking in the things of the spirit, life gets exciting. Yeah. Oh, I'm trying Hallelujah. to be calm here tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Life gets exciting because the God of heaven and earth is involved in your business. Yeah. Yeah. He is leading you step by step Life, when you go in prayer, can take on a different dimension when you're gainfully employed in the kingdom. Because when you're operating in the realm of the kingdom, what will God do if you're faithful? Give you more responsibility. Amen. And he will unlock greater realms of revelation that you need in order to live in this earth. You don't want Jesus to be a part-time lover. 
Imagine if that was the case in the young household. Somebody say, Houston, we got a problem. But Jesus does not want a part-time lover. Amen. He wants someone that will love him yeah. continuously. Whether things are going good or going bad, it makes no difference. Because if you're truly living for God, the enemy has put a bullseye on your back. Yeah. And you have to know that goes with the territory. But God's not sitting up in heaven saying, oh my God, I didn't see that coming. With that, he's giving you an answer. But you got to use, this is why prayer is important. Because many times the answer is already there, but we don't know it because we have not taken the time to seek God in regards to that. Because we're dealing with a God that knows our past, present, and future all at the same time. Prayer is so important. Exactly. Because God deals in foreknowledge. God already knows the answer to your problem. You don't, but he does. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh my God, I feel this strongly. Yeah. You need to know that. Mm-hmm. You're not helpless or hopeless. Amen. If God is your father, guess what? He's going to look out for you. Amen. But what God told me at the beginning of 2020, that he was going to require a greater level of intimacy. He said specifically for his ministers, but that also meant everybody because the ministers was the ones responsible for feeding God's sheep. And you cannot lead unless you lead by example. I encourage all of you tonight to get off the soapbox of 15 minutes of prayer. Really? (laughs) Get off that soapbox. The presence of God. Mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Rabba Basira, Rabba Bakanda, Rabba Basira. Oh, my Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Rabba Basira, Oh, glory. Oh, your presence, oh God. Burping us a hunger tonight. Oh, God. Hallelujah. After your presence. Yes, Lord. Oh, let us crucify our flesh, oh God. Oh my God. Oh Jesus. Oh my God. God is ready to activate people in here tonight. Oh Jesus. Oh we let the fire of the spirit burn tonight. Thank you Jesus. Oh my God. Thank you Jesus. We want to create an atmosphere where the supernatural, where the gifts of the spirit is welcome. Because that's the only way you're going to grow. Now let's be clear tonight. Learning how to hear from God, you may make some mistakes learning how to discern the voice of God. But that's all part of the process. You cannot be afraid to learn how to do what you do. Thank you, Jesus. Because after all these years, I've seen, I've had, I've had people tell me some stuff that I know was not of God. <laughs> but the only way they're going to learn is through trial and error. Does everybody understand that? So let me give a word of advice. Now, we, we talk about word of knowledge, right? Just a few minutes ago, right? It's okay for you not to say the Lord said until you're sure. Do you understand that? You can say, well, you can even put it in the form of a question. I'm sensing this. Is this true? And they'll say, no, it's not true. That gets you off the hook. (laughs) Because once you say God said, that puts you in a different category. Do you understand that? But what the enemy would love to do is to keep you from reaching out and and trying and testing. Because remember, all the gifts, all the gifts that we'll be talking about over this segment have to be activated by faith. They have to be activated by faith. 
That's powerful. Now, you have your natural senses, right? Your sense of taste, touch, smell, all the good stuff. Sight. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. We're going to deal with this because I thought I was going to go in a specific direction. Now, this is from our experience. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Now, going back to what we said, you need to be able to hear from God. I'm going to do this. Now, when you operate within the realm of the spirit, now, let's, let's make sure we're clear on, I mean, on the word of knowledge. When I come to somebody with a word of knowledge, it's something that's being revealed to me that the person that I'm administering to already knows. It's confirming that. Does everybody understand that? If we call your name, we tell you that you're going through this, that, the next thing, you know that, but we don't know that except by revelation. That's word of knowledge. I want you to know that. God revealed something to me that I did not know except by revelation. Now, all of the gifts of the Spirit, for the duration of time that we're going to be talking about these, many times they're going to be interconnected. When I say interconnected, you may have a combination of word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy. When we talk about the gifts of healing, you're going to, you're going to see some things. If you're dealing with working the miracles, you'll see that many times the gift of faith is tied to it. All of these things are interchangeable. And that's important to understand. But we want you to get to a place where you start to operate in these things by second nature. That you don't have to struggle with these things. So we want an environment where you, where you can be free to make your mistakes. Because when we did the prophetic when we was in Dallas, this is how we did it. There was three or four experienced prophets that would be doing most of the ministering and then there was other people that would be shadowing them. They'd be behind them interceding and praying and if God gave them a word it, it, would, be ju- it, it would be matched up against what, the, what the, um, the senior prophets were saying. They was learning how to hear based upon what the senior prophets were saying. Does everybody understand it? The prophet was prophesying and they were standing alongside them and if they didn't get anything they didn't say anything. But if they got something then they had the freedom to say to them. If they didn't have confidence, we told them, we told them don't prophesy. <laughs> just, just simply test it to see if that's how God's dealing with you. Being in the environment gave them the ability to have confidence. And within six months, those that could barely hear from God was, was taking over their own prophetic teams. And that was just two weekends out of a month that we was meeting. Amen. Does everybody understand that? It does not take long to be activated. It starts with a hunger. But many people, they come to get a nice word. They come to get healed. But that's all they want. You got to get more than just the healing of the word. You got to get to Jesus. You got you to get the giver. Because many times needs are means of us getting into a place where we can be connected with people that can help us. Because the world is full of needs. Check this out. The prophetic word in a time that we're living in right now, in a time of crisis, will bring an assurity that you're okay. But we're not talking about blind encouragement here. We're talking about a direct word from the throne. And, when, and this, this is why word of knowledge is so important. Word of knowledge is an introduction because when you can hear by word of knowledge that something that God knows your situation, you now have the confidence, you now have, no, you now have the ability to know, first, God can hear me. God has heard me. Then we can prophesy, which is different from word of knowledge. We can tell you what your future is because you've already got an established fact from the word of knowledge. Prophecy, I mean, prophecy is now able to go forward because word of knowledge has established something. Did everybody understand that? Yeah. Prophecy foretells. Many times God uses me in word of knowledge before we start prophesying. That's not, that's not true in every case, but in most cases, that's the way it is. 
Now, dealing with all of this, God can give you word of knowledge in a multitude of different ways. Now, we talked about the census for a few minutes. Now, all, everything that I'm going to mention right now applies across the board in the situations that they're appropriate. Now, in the natural, we hear things, right? But in the spirit, we can also hear things in the spirit. Now, every one of you have a different way of that God deals with you. So we're just covering some things right now that'll be important. Now, hearing doesn't necessarily mean an audible voice. Does everybody understand that? It can be an audible voice, but hearing in the spirit does not mean it's like me talking right now. Doesn't necessarily mean that. But you know because you can sense something, something being dropped in your spirit. Yes. Impressions in your spirit like a voice that you're hearing. This is important tonight because those of you, we're, gonna, we're here to connect the dots of things that have already happened or are going to happen. So you hear things in the spirit. Then you sense or feel things in the spirit. Did everybody understand that? You can feel, she's she getting ready. So you can feel things in the spirit. You can feel spirits. Sometimes when people are in front of me, I say this all the time, I sense this or I feel this in the spirit. All the time. That's a sensing or a feeling. Then seeing in the spirit. You can, you can, you can, get, a, you can get a vision of something that flashes before you. Brenda has that happen quite often. Where she, where she can see stuff in the spirit realm. That's important. So we're tying it all together so you understand that. Now, and people don't believe this, but you can also smell things in the spirit too. You can smell spirits. You can smell things. There was a lady that was buku distance away from me in one church that I was at in New Jersey. And as I was looking at her, as she was walking by, I could tone in on the wine or liquor that she had been drinking. And I wasn't close enough to smell it. I was in tune. You can smell stuff over the phone. <laughs> you can do a lot of things. People don't believe this stuff is real. But I'm telling you. And I've got other examples of that. The first time I knew it, my, my apostle sitting up there, he said, uh, a, a reefer just went by his nose. Somebody was, in there, was, was doing some stuff they had no business doing. <laughs> now listen, it's important for us to break ground here because we're preparing you for what's going to happen. Now God can give you a word of knowledge in a dream. Now every dream may not be of God. But God has got a multitude of ways. Remember, God will give you knowledge that have to be revealed that you did not know. It's important, it's important to understand that. Hallelujah. Do you have something you want to say? Yes, I think I was, I was about to uh, piggyback on something you had said, but I'm going to go ahead and say uh, about hearing the Lord in the spirit. Praise God. We have to, all the gifts works by faith, and everything in the spirit works by love. And then, in order to be keen in the spirit, we really need to have a prayer life. Amen. It's very important for us to have a prayer life, set aside some time with the Lord. And sometimes you don't even have to say anything. I know the Lord told me when I first, <laughs> I used to talk all the time. Talk, 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 talk. He said, Brenda, study to be quiet. And I say, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> but he has more to say to us yes. than what we have to say to him because he already know our situation. So we don't have to stay talking about what's going on because he already know. Yeah, yeah. And maybe he's trying to get a word to you so you can know what to do, but you're so busy to talk and you can't hear nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the Lord wants us 
to take time, and us good, us women, we good for that. We know that. <laughs> he wants us to sit still sometimes just before him. And a, a lot of times I say, Lord, what do you want? When I come to him, what do you want? Because we can come to the Lord with our laundry list of all the things we want him to do. But what does he want from you? We should be asking him, what does he want? Because he's going to meet our needs as we get in his presence and love on him. Because he already knows what's going on in your life. I remember one morning I got in prayer and the Holy Spirit told me I was owing, a, I was owing something. I had gotten a, a, a ticket and, um, and I was paying on that ticket and I skipped the payment. And that morning in prayer, the Holy Spirit say, pay that $175. Pay it all today. And I'm arguing with the Holy Spirit. I say, oh, but I got this to do, that to do, this and that and that to do. I'm just going to give them 75. <laughs> I go to pay on that ticket. The lady asks me, how much are you planning on paying? She said, no, she said this first. She said, we have a warrant out for your arrest. <laughs> she said, if you had gotten stopped within the last year, a whole year, they, you would have went to jail. Never been to jail. I know I would have cut up. <laughs> and so she said, so how much are you going to pay? I'm paying the whole thing, the whole 175. <laughs> I had to laugh at myself when I got out of there. I said, Lord, you are somebody. Yes. You already forewarned me yes. to pay the whole thing, and I'm trying to tell you what I'm going to do. Hello? <laughs> when you have the whole scoop. <laughs> God is so good to us. Amen. And we would just take time to get in his presence and just allow him to speak yes. to us about what he want us to do, not what we want to do. <laughs> oh, but I thank the Lord. So hearing, his, hearing from God is, is paramount. It's very important. So if you don't hear God, ask the Lord. Get on your knees. Cry out to God. Say, Lord, I want to hear from you. I need to hear from you. Not just want to. I need to hear from you. Because that's your lifeline. Amen. Amen. Prayer is your lifeline. Amen. So it's very important to pray. Now we're still on the subject of word of knowledge. Hallelujah. Let me give you an example of word of knowledge in scripture. St. John chapter 4. Hallelujah. I'm going to go to now. Jesus is with the woman at the well. Like I said, you don't have to turn to it. I'm going to say it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we're going to tie this together. Now Jesus, now, like I said, for, 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 for constraint of time, we're going to deal with this. I'm going to start at verse number 13. It says, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again. We're talking about the living water now. You can, you can actually follow from the beginning of St. John chapter 14. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now watch this. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Now watch this. Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. And that sayest thou truly. That, my friend, is a word of knowledge. Amen. Yeah. That, my friend, is a word of knowledge. Now, in the ministry that we came out of, if you didn't want to live right, you were afraid to come to church. <laughs> Seriously, you were afraid to come to church. If you had a particularly bad week, you knew the x-ray machine was going to be on. And this is one of the things we learned. Even if we played hooky from church, 
God would still tell the man of God. So it did not make a difference. You might as well came and got your medicine. We have lost respect for the things of God. At least we knew not to shuck and judge. The mothers could tell you something. They knew if you wasn't living right, the pastor didn't have to get to you. They could. Because that's when discernment, that's when they, we need to, we need to remember this. Hallelujah. Now the gifts of the spirit are actually there as a way of protecting us. Protecting you and protecting those that you're connected to. When God reveals things to you about someone, God doesn't do things for show. He does things with the idea that his will can be established in the earth. And if a person is not walking in proper alignment, the will of God's not being established in an individual. In a lot of settings, people can go into church and hide. That's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. Theoretically, when we come to the house of God, his presence should be here, right? That means everything that happens within the realm of the church should be an indication of what heaven is doing. Does everybody understand that? When we preach, we preach under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, right? That means we're giving divine instruction based upon his agenda. Oh, my God. But it also means the gifts of the Spirit have the ability to be on full, full display. And that's powerful. Because you want to be right, right? Now, the church that came out again, the men and women of God were able to walk into such a realm that they could hear your thoughts. That's a scary thought because Jesus heard their thoughts. Amen. There was one time I was thinking something, Pastor Gary's picked up. Somebody was just thinking such and such and such and such over there. I'm like, Ooh. it was a scary thought. <laughs> now, this is not about fear mongering, but this is normal. This is not about fear mongering. You need to understand that there's realms of the spirit that you can walk in. Hear me clearly tonight. There are no limitations as to what God wants to do with you on an individual basis. Does everybody understand it tonight? You can be everything you can be in God because God has not put a restriction on you. Intimacy with God gives what we call benefits. When you're friends with God, he shared things with you that he won't share with anybody else. Does everybody understand that? That's very important. Hallelujah. And we know this is true because there's lots of, around, lots of people walking around that are taking stuff out of context that don't know the will of God for their lives and sometimes they're behind the pulpit. Does everybody understand that? It's important to understand you need a relationship. I don't want to preach and teach if the Holy Ghost is not preaching and teaching through me. Because the most I'm going to do is get in trouble. One of the things I've learned, when the Holy Ghost goes sit down, I go sit down. Now, in other words, when the Holy Ghost is finished, we stop. If I'm up and the Holy Ghost went and sat down, then I'm in trouble. Because the only thing you can do is get in trouble. Now, we're going to tie this together. We want to pray over people tonight. We want to speak a blessing over you. Now, listen. This is not because we're hand happy. I mean, laying hand happy. We spend a lot of time before the Lord in prayer. Leading up to this time. Because we want to bless you. We want to speak over you what God's given us. Thank you, Jesus. But we're going to do that. We're going to tie this together. Now, word of knowledge, write this down, is where, we got, where God reveals something about a person or situation that is unknown to the prophet. Now,
Thank you, Jesus. Now, word of knowledge and word of wisdom and prophecy, a lot of times they can be interchangeable along with everything else. All right? Now, a word of wisdom, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, is divine. Hallelujah. Go to Matthew. I'm going to read this. Matthew chapter 17, verse 24. Now, this is, this is when they came to, to Peter and Jesus about their paying taxes, the temple tax. And the Lord dropped that in my spirit today. Verse, Matthew chapter 17, verse 24. And when they had come to Capernaum, those who had received the temple tax came to Peter and said, does your teacher not pay the temple tax? Peter said, and he said, yes. And when he had come into the house, now watch this. Jesus anticipated him saying, what do you think, Simon? From whom do the kings of the earth take customs or taxes? From their sons or from strangers? Peter said to him, from strangers. Jesus said to him, then the sons are free. Now, verse 27. Nevertheless, lest we should offend them, go to the sea, cast in a hook, and take the fish that comes up first. <laughs> and when you have opened its mouth, you will find a piece of money. Take that and give it to them for me and you. That's a supernatural way to meet a need. Divine revelation. It was a word of wisdom how to deal with a challenging situation. Does everybody understand that? I think that's important. And a lot of these things can be construed either word of knowledge, word of wisdom, but you, we understand that when we deal with word of knowledge, we're primarily, when we administer to people, we're revealing something to them. With, in other words, we're speaking what God's revealed to them, something that they already know. And that opens the door. For everything. Now, every gift is supernatural. Every single solitary gift is supernatural. We wanted to give you an example of what a word of wisdom was. So that way, when these things happen, you can also, you can kind of get a gauge according to the word of how, of what is happening. That's very important. Thank you, Jesus. Oh! Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, the Bible is full of prophecy. When we prophesy, we foretell. We're predicting the future. When you look at the definition for the word prophet in the Greek, it says a foreteller. Does everybody understand that? Now, some people, when they've classified the word of wisdom, and they almost say it's prophecy. No, it's not. Hallelujah. Prophecy is a foretelling. Now, many times prophecy will be given on piggybacking off a of word of knowledge. Because word of knowledge opens the door for us to prophesy. We gain the trust. God gains the trust of the individual that he's speaking to by revealing something that only God could have revealed. And for the, for the individual... Now you're open to prophesy of the future because a lot of times people can prophesy stuff and, and you know, you don't have any point of reference. But when a word of knowledge establishes the fact that God knows who you are, where you are, then it's much easier for you to receive the prophecy. Does everybody understand that? I think that's important. Now all the gifts are going to work in conjunction with each other, but they all require what? Faith. Now every one of you at some point, you're going to have to take that, that, that launch out into the deep. Every one of you that cannot hear from God, the beautiful thing about it is it doesn't have to stay that way. So there's no condemnation with anybody that does not know that they have confidence because everybody has to go through the trial and error of hearing God. I went through periods of time that I thought I was hearing God and was not. You need to be able to know the voice of God to survive in this world. Yeah. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Yeah. God has got to be able to lead you yeah. in this earth as his child. Hear me clearly tonight. As his child, as many as are led by the Spirit, they are what? 
the sons of God. Hearing God is part of your spiritual inheritance. You do not have to be confined to hearing God only on Sunday. Oh my God. Hallelujah. And the biggest thing you can do is hear from God. Because a person who can hear from God, you don't have to worry about them. Because God can speak to them. And when God speaks to them, you know they're going to be okay because they're going to do right by God. Now let me add a disclaimer to that. You can hear God and say, Lord, I ain't going to do it, but that's not to your benefit. Obedience will keep you out of a lot of harm's way. Much, many of us are creatures of habit. We get up in the morning and we already know what our day is going to be like. On the weekend, we know what it is. We've got a plan, but we haven't consulted God to see if that's what he wants us to do. And many times people put themselves in harm's way because they got their own plans and they don't know how to hear from God. Many of you will miss opportunities if you do not be led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody lift your hands before the Lord. I hear the Lord, yes. We want you to sleep in the spirit of God tonight. We're going to ask everybody to come up here to the front real quick. And we're going we're gonna to speak over you, right? We're going to pray over you. We want to release what God's given you because we know some people are going to go get you some sleep. But we want you to sleep in the Holy Ghost tonight. Amen. 